it's not often that all three readings so clearly converge on a central truth of God. It, it, it sure makes entering into the readings and attempting, however uh, unworthy we are to unpack them, sure makes it a whole lot easier. Might not be more enjoyable for you, but it makes it easier for us. The theme of peace. It's all about the reading of, from Isaiah. Uh, Paul is speaking about it and help it, helps us to understand God's gift of peace through Jesus Christ and His cross in Galatians. And our Lord Himself is speaking about God's revelation of peace, God's gift of peace in Luke's Gospel. God so knows the human mind and the human heart. He so knows how we long for peace, how we desire peace in our own life, how we can be beset by anxieties from a multitude of different reasons. And God reveals in His glory His deep desire to give to us His gift a peace, that he's not holding it back, that he's not reserving it for a privileged few, but he wants each and every one of us to receive this gift of deep inner calm. Th this isn't the silly stuff of goosebumps and passing fancy. This is the deep stuff of confidence, of feeling safe, of having a sense of direction. All the while, we don't really know where we're going but we know that God is leading us to where we need to be. There's a sense of confidence, peace. In the book of Isaiah, the people of God at this time were beset with so many anxieties. Their future was completely unknown. In fact, it had radically changed from what they thought it would be. Perhaps not unlike our own. Our own continuing anxieties from economic times that are tumultuous. And the imagery that God reveals about the nature of His peace, about its superabundance, about its capability of comforting is, is lovely, is inspiring, is poetic. Like an overflowing torrent, God wishes to pour out this deep inner calm so that we're not anxious, so that we're not beset by distractions, that we're not filled with insecurities, that our lives are no longer characterized by disappointment or despair or despondency. I mean, imagine, just imagine in a moment that it's God's desire, not the church's invention, it's God's own revelation that He wants to saturate us with His gift of peace, like an over flowing torrent. In my worst moments, I can cry out and just say, pour out that torrent of your peace upon me. I don't know, Lord, how else to find rest for my soul. In the second reading, St. Paul connects the peace, which is God's gift to us, not our creation, God's gift to us, with the cross. And at first that might seem really puzzling. But then we realize that it was through the blood poured out by Jesus that peace for all people is secured. And that there's a strength that we discover in turning our sides to the cross. And how that can be especially <clears throat> comforting, consoling, and strengthening in difficult times. The church, for her part, makes a great and concerted effort to see that the cross is prevalently portrayed not only in churches but in all Catholic institutions and encourages the faithful to have the cross as a part of your own domestic church, as a part of your own home for that very reason. And then in the gospel, of course, Jesus making clear that peace again is God's gift through Him, given, not kept. I so understand the anxiety, if you're unfortunately wired by, like I am, 
The temptation is we got to get all the work done first and somehow establish a plateau from which we, maybe we can kind of chill out and relax and be peaceful. And yet God's word says nothing about that. <laughs> that it's in the midst of the chaos, it's in the midst of the frenzy, it's in the midst of the unexpected events of life, however difficult and painful and overwhelming, that God's peace stands to be received because it's his desire to give it to us right there. So how do we make it happen? Because I want it. In my best moments, I crave for it. In my best moments, I cry out for it. But how does it happen? I give you just three little steps. Pray daily. And again, if you're unfortunate enough to be wired like I am, you have to pray several times throughout the day. <laughs> I have difficulty remembering. I can have a great moment of prayer only to be beset by a task list and all of a sudden it's like I forgot to pray. No, in the midst of that busyness, the encounter that I'm dreading, uh, the event that I really am not interested in being connected with, the situation that I don't know where the words are going to come from, and instead of being all beset by anxiety, that's the very moment to beg for the Lord to give the peace that He promises. Pray daily. Receive the sacraments regularly. Regularly. That the sacraments themselves are the wellspring of grace and of peace. That they give to us this deep inner calm which is of God. When you make your way to the Holy Eucharist, that is medicine for our souls, my brother and sisters. That's given to us as gift from God for that very effect for us to experience the peace of God. And third, to lead others to God. To do so by our own actions and our words. For those who are Catholic Christians to extend invitations and words of encouragement for them to receive the sacraments regularly. When someone's beset with anxiety Pop psychology can often kick in to try to listen attentively, and there's a place for that, but first, there's supernatural reaction. Praying for them and inviting them back to the sacraments if it's been a while. No judgment, invitation. And in our parish, there's no lack of opportunity for confession with it taking place 30 minutes before every single Mass, including Sundays. What a wonderful way for peace to be experienced in the hearts of some of whom we know that right now are just so unsettled. It's God's deepest desire that we experience His great gift of peace.